Today I'm talking with Kathy Widom and we're going to be talking about parenting. So for any of you who have kids really from toddler to teens, um, I think this uh, video will be interesting for you. First of all, let me just say hi to you, Kathy. Thanks for being here. Hi, George. I'm really thrilled. And, yeah. uh, so appreciate this opportunity, really. Yeah, totally. Um, let me just share your bio with everybody and then, and then we'll kind of get into it. Um, so I'm just reading it out as it's written. You know how a parent or caregiver can be at their wits end when their child or teen won't listen. Well, they just want to be able to enjoy their kid and they're so done with the power struggles for bedtime, schoolwork, screen time, chores. It seems like no matter how hard they try to be the best parents, it never feels like enough because the chaos continues and the relationship with the child gets worse. Worry about their child wakes up at night, uh, wakes them up at night and they don't understand why other parents aren't struggling in the same way. Um, and Kathy partners with parents and caregivers to get res help restore peace of mind and peace at home. She helps parents get through uh, to their kids without yelling and have better relationships with them based on the understanding that behavior is, communica uh, is communication. Car Kathy's parent-centric approach lets parents and caregivers find hope at the intersection of brain science, attachment theory, family dynamics, and intuitive parenting wisdom. That's the longest bio I've ever read. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, it's, it's, um, it's really great work that you're doing. So um, let's get, it, get right into it. I actually uh, know that you have, I mean, I know that you have a, a, uh, a graphic, a kind of a chart to show us. I, I wonder actually, maybe we could start with that because it kind of uh -huh. gives the, it gives the principles that, that you uh, share with people. That sounds great. Um, actually, because the, the core um, is, um, um, <clears throat> the, okay. <laughs> Why did it go See, away? I think you had you had it pulled up just a moment ago. I, I, I did. Oh, there you go. Great. I'm just going to pull it up again because, okay. Um, is it there? Yes. Ah, okay. Great. I'm going to maximize it or it just does automatically. So um, right. I talk about a parent-centric approach. It's a word that I um, came up with to identify who, where, whose hands the solution lies in. So when you're talking about a parent-child relationship, the parent is the, um, the grown-up. The parent is the one where the power lies, even though so often it feels like our kids are in charge. Um, in reality, the power and the solution lies with the parents, which has been extremely empowering for the parents I've worked with. Because instead of feeling at the effect of their kids, they learn how to um, respond to their kids' needs and use strategies that address what is really happening with their kids' behavior, what their behavior means and is communicating, which is over, often overwhelm and stress. So can you give me an example of that? What, what, yeah, sh say more about that. When, uh, if you can think of a situation either in one of your clients' uh, lives or, or in yours. Well, sure. Um, so um, one of the, uh, so perfect for parent-centric, actually. Um, a couple I was wor I've, I've worked with had um, a three-year-old son. And when I was working with them, they would uh, go to like a birthday party or their friend's house for dinner. And inevitably their kid was the kid that would melt down before the cake or they couldn't get him to go play or um, he would seem miserable and literally at the, by the end would melt down and they'd have to leave with a big tantruming child. Um, and I, I help them understand that their kid is stress sensitive, which is another thing we can talk more about today, which means that their child has a less of a tolerance for stimulation, basically. He's more introverted. It could be that. It could be a number of reasons. It's like a spectrum. Uh, 
so if some kids might be like, oh, I don't wanna, that's like, all kids say that at some point, right? But this, if you go along the spectrum to where their kids like sort of says, I don't wanna, but if you keep kind of trying to get them to have fun at the party, they literally end up in a meltdown of crying and tears and tantrum. And that can happen even if they're older than three, but for three, you know, it's somewhat expected, but that extreme re reaction. So I got a call from them one day and the, the mom was so excited. She's like, I have to tell you what happened. We went to the birthday party. It was outside. It was like a carnival with rides and all that. Just imagine how a stress sensitive kid feels in light of all that stimulation, right? Um, and then they noticed him sort of shutting down. They noticed some signs and symptoms that they had identified through our work that he was starting to, they knew the next thing was not going to be pretty, right? <laughs> but they noticed and they just, they had gotten over worrying about what the other parents would think because they were realizing that their kid needed something and they took him to the car, they left. They took him to the car and he immediately fell asleep in his seat. And she couldn't be more excited because she felt so good as a parent that she had recognized what he needed and had um, taken the right action to do that. But that only could happen once she was able to have a new perspective that his behavior, as it says in the second principle, is an SOS, not an attack. And um, so, so here, so these principles, the first two are the ones that I might talk most about today. Connection matters more than perfection and behavior is an SOS, not an attack. And I'm gonna come back on screen because mm -hmm. I yes. realized I wasn't on screen to tell that story. Um, oh yeah, no, you were on okay. screen. I was able to, to have you there as well. Oh, be a little thumbnail, yes. wonderful. Because George is a tech maiden. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so that that story explains how she was able to take charge of it instead of trying to say, calm down. Um, it's just a little longer. Um, why don't you go play? It'll be fun. Like all the convincing and pushing against the information he was giving her, which is that he was getting overwhelmed and stressed out. So that was what parent-centric means. It puts the solution in the parent's hands instead of the child's hands. Or he starts to melt down and he goes in a timeout or something. None of that addresses what the behavior is really communicating. Got it. Does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does make sense. Great. So uh, what else? What, keep going with the, uh, the principles if you'd like. Okay. Um, so the the core principle really for my whole work is that connection matters more than perfection and that's very personal to me because um i that parent that we you read about you talked about in my bio i used to be that parent and um and the struggle uh, with one of my kids lasted for literally years until they were almost 20. And it's because I didn't know the principles that are now incorporated into my work, which are an integration of brain science and, um, you know, the other things I talked about, family dynamics, attachment. Um, but when I learned that the behavior was um, coming from a place of overwhelm or fear, not that they were afraid I was going to do something, but like a brain fear that starts a cascade of fight or flight in the body, emotions that are difficult for even us as adults, children don't have a way to deal with those. They have to learn that from us. They're, they're really only hard, hardwired for relationships. So whatever they come into is where they learn emotional re regulation. And most of us, I'll speak for myself, didn't really learn it that well in what we came into. Um, so 
the, the connection more than the perfection was the shift of trying and trying for years, making up a new plan of how to get homework done, trying a new approach, saying something right, difference, asking other parents who none of them knew what I was talking about. And I was like, be, being more consistent, trying everything. And inside, knowing that that something that I didn't know something, but I didn't know what it was. And so once that brain understanding came in that the behavior was communicating a state of deep of high arousal, which could look like uh, overwhelm, could look like um, yelling, could look like withdrawing, could look like so many things. And, and you also mentioned stress sensitive child. I mean, that works into this. Right? Exactly. So yeah. that's a term. I think I heard it from one of my teachers or I think I did, but I use it a lot and it helps parents a lot. I've gotten a lot of feedback mm -hmm. where they go, oh, I see. Because like, why can't my kid be like the other kids mm -hmm. who do their homework after school, you know? And, and really how many kids do that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know, but it seems like that when you're mm -hmm. struggling. Right, right. You feel alone and ashamed because mm. you can't fix it. Um, so the stress sensitivity means if you understand that you, you, if you understand that the actions you take need to be calming for your child, not increasing stress, then um, you'll have different results. And that, that goes right into connection more than perfection. So the question is not how can I get my kid to do the, their homework? The question is, how can I connect to my kid right now that I see that they're being oppositional? And my new eyes tell me, oh, wait, behavior's an SOS. They have a need, they can't verbalize it. Um, let me calm myself down so I can be more available to help calm them down. So it's a, it's a very different um, approach than many typical approaches that kind of use consequences and even rewards, like get your homework done and you can do your, you know, do your iPad. Well, that's fine if your kid has really pretty good self-regulation skills. But if your kid is stress sensitive, it just stresses them more and they get, then their homework takes longer, can take hours. It took hours for me. And they involve tears and pleading and trying. And so it doesn't solve it to add a reward or a consequence to a stress sensitive kid. I see. I see. So the, for, for the stress sensitive kid, it's more about, yeah, like you said, I mean, it's more about those principles that you laid out there. It's noticing the behavior and, and, and trying, to, trying to see what's underneath that, right? And then focusing on that relationship. Right, to see what's driving the behavior and mm -hmm. understanding that if you don't, it's, it's called co-regulation. Mm -hmm. If you, your kid is dysregulated, which means their, their rational brain's not working, we we all get dysregulated you know and uh but when your kids dysregulated they can't really think clearly so they can't think about what they're doing they have to calm down first so when you connect you can co-regulate if you have calmed yourself down to some extent doesn't have to be perfect that's what i love about the perfection you you can't be perfect I tried for many years. I'm a recovering perfectionist. You don't have to be perfectly calmed down, but you do have had to pause and downshift it a bit, you know, um, so that when your child, when you approach your child, they don't have to push back against this like energy of your dysregulation, which can flare a power struggle. Like, it's like, could you do this thing? And your kid says no, and you immediately jump in and go, you know you have to do this, you know you have to do it now. And then they're escalating. The image I use is pouring fuel on the fire. <laughs> so your kid says no, for instance, or they ignore you and you've repeated yourself 20 times already. 
those are both expressions, of, of the different expressions of fight or flight, right? So if you don't pause, it doesn't give them time to internally shift a little. And then you pour fire, they pour fire, you pour fire, and now you're triggered. And now you're remembering how it used to be when you were a kid. And, but you're not remembering it consciously. You're just reacting like that. Um, the, what you're talking about, another term you use is parent-centric approach. Right. Right, because it's really about understanding how you your contribution you're not just the one giving instructions and they're doing it but it's like your emotional state um is there they sense it right yes 100 percent. yeah and so i've seen i i don't have kids myself but i've been around people all my life who have kids and i do notice oh it's not just literally the words that come out of your mouth is not the, it's not the only thing they're sensing of course they're seeing everything else, um, but the, but I don't know. Maybe I'm not getting it totally right. What what is the parent centric approach? No, that that's um, exactly right. Um, my my first mentor who helped completely turn my relationship around with my kid 180 degrees um, used to say, "It's not what you're saying or doing; it's who you're being when you're saying or doing it." And that really goes against the grain of, please give me the right words. Tell me what to do. And um, so while I have a lot of great strategies, it's not magic. It's based on shifting your state to take action that makes sense in the situation. So well, the it's kind of like good leadership <laughs> in, at all levels is like this. Sure. Like as a, as a leader, you don't, tell your you know employees or your teammates or your audience members do this and do this and while you know while i'm doing something else or i'm i'm not embodying sort of the the information or the knowledge or the wisdom that i'm transmitting it's like no you got to embody it if you embody it and if you um it's like there's a there's a partnership between like you're saying your your state um your character you know, and what is coming out of your mouth or what is being, at, what you're asking them. Yeah, it's so interesting that it is, it's, it's, you're, to me, I mean, I think you're essentially talking about good leadership, but, but, yeah, because with our you're kids. also, <laughs> no, exactly, because you're talking about modeling. And yeah, right. I mean, yes, it's different with little ducklings, but honestly, the baby ducks learn by completely modeling from their parents, right? They follow along in a little line. Well, really a huge part of what kids learn is through modeling. And so if our kids are stress sensitive, it means they, they, need, they need to build resilience. Resilience is crucial for cognitive function and for emotional intelligence and for emotional regulation. So the modeling is the most important thing, which is why I work with parents. It isn't that the kids might not need additional support. Often I don't know that at first because I don't have a whole picture, but sometimes they do need additional support. I take a comprehensive approach, but that doesn't mean that I don't think, again, parent-centric. Where's the power lie? It lies in the hands of the parents. The solution lies in the hands of the parents in the sense that their kids will learn emotional regulation skills by how the parents are, not what they tell them. Yeah. And one, yeah, one of the, um, so one of the specialties you have, I mean, you, you work with parents who, I mean, and anybody who's watching this or listening to this who can relate to what Kathy's saying, you know, probably want to talk to Kathy. I think she can help you. Um, one of the specialties you work with that we haven't talked about yet, which I want to bring in real quick, is you work with parents of gender non-conforming kids um, and, and transgender, transgender kids, right? Mm -hmm. And tell us, I mean, those of you who have 
uh, that kind of a child know exactly why it's different, why it's unique. But for those of us who don't, or just what, share with us from your perspective, why is that different? How is that different in terms of parenting? Well, I think there's an inherent, it, it can depend on the age of the kid mm, coming okay. in, but if you're up into your puberty years, there's going to be a lot of anxiety layered in and anxiety is an expression of like they're inherently stress sensitive because they have inherent anxiety because of all they're going through with their identity and all the culture around them that can instill a lot of fear or um, their own internal. I mean, any adolescent is trying to find out who they are. But if you have a disconnect between who you are and what your body is, it can create a lot of anxiety and um, lead to some really difficult um, self-harm behaviors or um, you know, mental health issues. It's very complex, but it still layers into the same idea that behavior is communication. And so while the expression is different, I still, and, and I think that there, um, an additional awareness of how much stress and anxiety, just being who you are brings up for these kids, um, and uncertainty, um, the parent centric model still applies in the sense that the parents they are, um, of course, often worried about their kids, the parents that are trying to support their kids, okay, um, have, a, it's kind of a lot, they're lost a bit, because they're, um, they don't have much reference point for themselves, so they want to support their kids, and they're trying to support their kids in this, like, unknown land, and they don't know how to navigate it really, but they're, they're doing their best. And of course, I'm talking about the supportive parents whose kids are so fortunate to have them. And yet the parents, they need guidance. They need help dealing with their own complex feelings that include grief and, you know, all kinds of things they have to deal with, but not mm -hmm. with their kids mm -hmm. and the parent centric a model allows uh, them to become sort of who they need to be. So when they try to reach out to their kid and their kid lashes out, and instead of responding by walking on eggshells around their kid, which doesn't help anyone, they can start to get more centered and grounded in themselves to understand what's happening. And, and also I have a lot of resources and helps guide yeah. them to the right support. And speaking of uh, the kind of resources and support you provide, um, I want you to talk about two of those things. You have, you have a, wor a way to work with people you call the standalone session. Mm -hmm. And then you also have a group thing going on for sheltering in place right now. So yes. um, let's, uh, yeah. let's, start with, uh, let, let's start with the sheltering in place, if, if that's okay. Let's start with that sure. and then we'll go to the, the, the standalone. So what's sure. the sheltering place um, events that you're doing? Well, parents are dealing with a lot of new issues, having to be home, work at home, maybe be solopreneurs at home, yeah. which is kind of in a way more challenging because yeah. their income yeah. then depends on that, um, and be teachers and be parenting and all the things. So um, I've, I started this weekly uh, Zoom group, parent group, called sheltering in place with kids or sheltering plus sanity at home um, where and it's it's been a, a great opportunity for parents to come together to find support and to like share ideas even like that's what's been so great too is like so how do you deal with this and then an exchange can happen a feeling of not being alone and also I can come in with some um, guidance uh, which is what happened last week where the dad was like, you know, since she started doing a lot more schoolwork instead of like doing it on our own, there's a lot more tension. So I brought in about connection and gave him specific strategies about how to 
uh, structure things maybe differently or a special time with their kid or, you know, so we brought in some strategies that were helpful and he gave me ideas about what he thinks, uh, what he needed, you know, and how to deal with screen time. That's yes. a huge thing right and now. And this group I want to mention is uh, you're, you're doing it right now on a pay what you can basis. Yes, I am. So yep. it's like, you know, don't let money be an issue, no. obviously, depending on what your income level is. So um, I'll put the link uh, in the video notes. So be sure to check that out. And then you can Wonderful. see, yeah, it's really anywhere from zero up. Um, so it's, it's obviously affordable for everybody. Yeah. Um, the other thing you do is the standalone session. Um, tell us about that a bit. Yeah, so well, when pe often when people want to explore whether someone's a person they want to work with or the right fit or has the right philosophy for, their, for what they want, um, it can be hard to, to get that opportunity without it being laced into some, maybe a package or a, something like that. So I, I've, I've um, created these standalone sessions which is just that it gives the parent chance to share their challenges me a chance to share my philosophy we get to feel feel out each other do we click you know and i can tell them what then at the end i sort of can say well here's what i think are some might work for you and they can tell me how they feel like it's really a chance to get to know each other but more than that really see if we click and they like what they hear when they see the seven principles do they resonate or do they they say no no that's not for me and so um i want them to know that so i have two standalone sessions on the page that i gave you the link one is for parents of trans and gnc kids and one is for the parents at their wits end with the behavior um which oh. often is driven by anxiety which is a huge deal these days yeah, with kids sure so, so I'll be sure to, obviously the links will be in the video notes, so be sure to check it out for those of you who are interested. Kathy, thank you so much for doing your work. You're so welcome. Um, I love my work so much because I want to pay it forward. I don't think any parent needs to struggle the way I did. And yeah. so I want to share that. And Thank yeah. you. So for those of you watching, if you um, connect with, if you have kids yourself, connect with Kathy's philosophy, please do click on one of the links and, and try out her services. Those of you who know somebody with kids that um, are, that they're having a challenging time with, you know, send this video to them or send the links to them. So with that, thanks everybody for watching. Thank, thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much, George.